On today's menu is something that I make very frequently at home. Something that I feel is so satisfying and comforting. And above all, it is nutritious as well as delicious. Namaskar and welcome to Curries with Bumbi. And today I have come with two recipes. Rajma as it is called in India can be made with different varieties of kidney beans. I usually make it with either the large dark colored kidney beans or the smaller light colored pinto beans which is also known as chitra rajma. Between the two I like the soft buttery flavor of pinto beans but you can use any one of them depending upon your choice and preference. Please let me know in the comment section which one you like more. I am a strong believer of soaking the beans overnight. I always soak them with a tablespoon of salt dissolved in water. The salt makes the outer skin softer and this allows them to cook faster resulting in buttery soft beans. The next day please discard all that salty water. Rinse the beans with fresh water and proceed with the recipe. My friends please do not forget to discard that salty water because if you do so then your curry will be tasting just like the ocean followed by your tummy roaring and rumbling like the waves. So always discard the water in which you soak your beans whether you salt it or not. Ok, I added the beans in my pressure cooker along with hot water. You can also make this in a regular pot. But in that case the cooking time will be more. Allow the cooker to come up to full pressure on high heat. Then reduce the heat to very low and set a timer for 13 minutes if using a regular pressure cooker or 15 minutes if using an instant pot. In the meantime we will make a paste. So blend a jar out and in goes ginger, garlic. I will be using a tablespoon of chopped onion, a green chili which is optional and a few red ripe tomatoes. You can also use canned crushed tomatoes. Then it is blender time. You need a smooth paste like this. Ok, once pressure cooking done, allow all the pressure to be released naturally and then open the lid of your cooker. As you can see, the beans have become buttery soft. I like using black cardamom because it gives a nice smoky flavor. But if you do not get it, then please use 3 to 4 green cardamoms. I like to whack it open a little bit. Ok, pot out with 4 tablespoons of oil. Heat the oil on medium high heat. Once the oil is hot, reduce heat to medium low and add dry bay leaf, cinnamon stick and the crushed cardamom. Lower the heat to low and add a teaspoon of cumin seeds that is jeera. Allow the seeds to crackle and dance around and then add finely chopped onions along with half a teaspoon of salt. Stir the onions from time to time on medium heat till they reach a golden color. In the meantime we will make a spice paste. In a bowl add half a teaspoon of turmeric powder, one teaspoon of chili powder. I like using Kashmiri chili powder which is milder than regular chili powder. You can also use paprika if you want to avoid that chili heat. Two teaspoons of ground coriander also known as dhania powder and a teaspoon of ground cumin that is jeera powder. Add a fourth of a cup of water, mix and your spice paste is ready. I do not like browning the onions too much for this recipe. And then it is spice time. Stir the spice paste on low heat for a minute or two. As you can see the oil is released along the sides so time for the blended paste to go in. Add salt but keep this in mind that we had also added salt to our beans. Now partially cover the pot on medium low heat and stir it from time to time till the paste thickens up. It's all a test of patience here my friends. If you want the flavors to intensify then you need to go through these steps. At the end your patience will pay off and that's where the satisfaction comes into play. 
Okay, see how everything has come together into one pasty mass? So it's time to add the aromatic ingredients now. That is a teaspoon of garam masala powder and a teaspoon of crushed kasuri methi that is dried fenugreek leaves. These two ingredients are added later to retain their flavors. Then the beans tumble down. I also like adding the stalks of coriander leaves but that is totally optional. I know I always overdo it when it comes to coriander leaves. I again added another half a cup of hot water. The curry thickens up a lot once it cools down so I like keeping it bit runny because I will be having it with cumin rice and that's coming up next so please stay with me. Now cover it on low heat for about 15 minutes. Next going to cook a delicious jeera rice that is cumin rice that pairs wonderfully with the rajma. Use a heavy bottomed pot, medium heat, add a tablespoon of oil and a tablespoon of ghee that is clarified butter. I always make ghee at home and I will leave the link to that recipe in the description box so please check that out. Once the ghee melts add a dry bay leaf, a small cinnamon stick and two green cardamoms. Then goes the main ingredient that is a heaped teaspoon of jeera that is cumin seeds. Remember the oil should be hot but not smoking hot because too hot oil will burn the cumin seeds and you will be having a bitter and burnt cumin rice that's no fun at all. At the same time the oil should be hot enough to allow the seeds to splutter to release their flavor. I have washed the rice thoroughly till the water runs clear and then soaked the rice in water for 15 minutes. I am using basmati rice but you can use any rice of your choice but in that case the cooking time will vary depending on the rice you are using. Gently stir the rice for a few minutes and then add three and a half cups of hot water. If you do not have time to soak the rice for 15 minutes then use three and three quarters of a cup of hot water. Add half a teaspoon of salt and a teaspoon of lemon juice or vinegar which makes the rice look whiter and shiny. Now allow the rice to come up to a boil on medium heat. Back to the beans. Do a taste test and adjust the seasonings. Add more salt if required or chili powder if you want more heat or a little bit of sweetness in any form if you feel it to be sour but you know that sweetness is always optional. I leave all that up to you. I added my beloved coriander leaves. You can use any herb of your choice. Then with the back of your spoon mash a few of the beans. This brings in a thickness. But remember my friends, please do not happily mash everything because then it will be a disaster. Keep it for 2 minutes uncovered. Ok so the rice will soon start swelling up and the water will decrease. When it reaches this stage then cover on very low heat for 8 minutes. My rajma is done and it may seem soupy now but this is going to thicken up more once it cools down. After 8 minutes heat off. Fluff up the rice. Sprinkle some chopped coriander leaves if you desire and cover it for 10 minutes. That 10 minutes is very crucial as the rice will get fluffier from the residual heat. So please give it that standing time. This is what to me is simple and humble food. Something that brings in warmth and comfort. At the end if you cook your food you have put in all that effort into making it. So no matter how simple a food is you will relish eating it. Please click that like button for me and I will see you next time. Bye bye.